There we go. Okay, so now since we are on the ubuntu.com dash download section, uh, we click it on the desktop uh, link and you are going to see here a couple of uh, download buttons. I'm going to be using this one here, the, uh, the Ubuntu 19.04. I'm just going to ignore this. Okay, there we go. Um, I guess I can just uh, download it here on one of my hard drives. And just wait, uh, just wait for the download to finish. There we go. So uh, this there is a new version of the Ubuntu desktop. I'm going to try it out. I already have installed um, the previous version. Uh, that is the uh, Ubuntu 18.04.2 long term support. So I've been using it for quite some time. It's really stable. Uh, today I may like to take a look at the new one and uh, the beautiful thing about linux distributions is that the configuration and installing doesn't take that much effort anymore uh, considering how it was in the past oh. and looks like it's about to finish uh, i may like to look for the rufus software i don't have it okay let's look for it Uh, the Rufus software, uh, I'm, Googling, I'm Googling for it right now. It's basically a little program that creates um, USBs with ISOs from Linux distributions or, or even Windows. I'm going to download this. Uh, yeah, why not? In the same place. So, um, I already have a 2 gigabyte image from Ubuntu. And the Rufus software is already downloaded. Let's start it out. And um, I already had my USB connected into my PC, so it's showing right here. I need to click here on select. Um, and here it is. This is the ISO. See if I can actually, there we go. So this is an Ubuntu 19.04 desktop ISO here. I'm going to choose that ISO and everything else I'm going to leave it as it is and just click uh, begin. Obviously you need to make sure that the USB is selected right here and be warned that uh, if you had something on that USB it's going to be deleted. Uh, it's actually warning me here. Uh, okay, let's just say okay, yes. And here uh, well, I'm going to say yes, the ISO is okay. And the last warning is uh, what I just said, that every data on the USB is going to be deleted. I don't have anything there, so it's okay. And I guess it's going to start doing its thing. And once this um, ISO is uh, installed on the USB, I'm going to be restarting the computer. So let's give it a, a, some time here and the programs that I'm going to be oh wait before leaving Windows I need to I need to download the official NVIDIA drivers for my for my uh, video card so I'm going to be doing this on Windows because trying to do it inside Linux is a, is a chore so, because uh, I don't have the, the actual video drivers uh, installed there. Actually, uh, I see here that my GeForce RTX 2070 is already chosen. Uh, Linux 64 bit. Uh, okay, seems like uh, I do have this uh, video card, by the way, the GeForce RTX 2070. So I'm going to download that. There we go. Download it. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, on my hard drive. Looks like the Rufus program is about to finish. It's going to give me more than enough time to download the driver for the video card. 
So here is the driver. So this dot run file is the driver. I'm going to be needing this right after installing. Uh... Okay, it looks like it's already over. Now wait. Okay, let's wait. Maybe it's about to finish in a couple of minutes now. Maybe. And uh, it's still copying files, I guess. Well, the thing is that I cannot just uh, finish this uh, Ubuntu desktop. And you may think that I may be able to just, uh, after installing Ubuntu, I may be able to just do this same thing here. Uh, but the truth is that I need to do uh, the installation of the driver is quite complicated. You are going to see why. In the oh, and before I forget, if I recall, where is it? Uh, how to store Samba? I already did that. Uh, developer, how to store MariaDB? Wonder if I save how to install the, the video drivers i guess i should be okay it seems like it's finished but before i leave windows i'm going to copy this into my usb go There we go. So the video driver is right here. I guess let's abandon Windows for the moment. My USB is still inside the PC, it's still connected. And right now I'm going to press, uh, keep pressing F12, just for me to be able to restart. There we go. So here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for my, uh, this one says Ubuntu, but this is not the right one. I'm looking for the Kingston Data Traveler. Uh, let's try it out. There is a couple here. I'm going to try out the UAFI Kingston Data Traveler. There we go. So I'm going to just install Ubuntu. And there we go. Here is the installer. Uh, pretty much so far has been uh, uh, very straightforward. Not a big deal. Use Spanish because I speak Spanish. And my keyboard sadly is a mechanical keyboard. That's not the sad part. Uh, the sad part is that it comes in English only. So I'm going to look for English. US. Oh. I'm going to choose minimal installation and install third party software for the hardware and graphics. That never actually happens in the sense that I still had to install the video driver anyway. So it doesn't do much uh, yet. I'm, do I'm clicking on that option. So I'm supposed to have a, a, a less of a hassle trying to uh, play back some videos or music anyway. Uh, but never mind that. I'm just going to choose that. Minimal installation. And next, I'm going to be choosing where to actually install the operating system here. Check it out. Some time now. Wonder what what is actually doing here. Okay, it's taking some time. Feel free to move forward if you are looking at this on, on a video. 
But anyway, well, I wonder what it's doing. I haven't choose anything. There we go. Took quite long enough. Um, okay, so it's telling me to delete my previous Ubuntu installation and reinstall it. Uh, since I am afraid that this may do some changes on my Windows uh, installation, I'm not going to choose this one. So I'm going to maybe let's try this one. Let's delete and install Ubuntu. Uh, no, I'm going to choose this one. More options, so I can actually do a custom installation. So here we see a lot of hard drives here. So the MBME 0 N1 is my main Windows installation. I'm not going to be touching any of this. Uh, SDA, it contains a single two terabyte NTFS uh, uh, partition. This is my storage uh, hard drive. This is another uh, storage hard drive, I believe. And here we go. The EXT4, this is my Ubuntu installation. So I'm going to change this one here. I'm going to choose EXT transactional is formatted and I'm going to choose the root folder. There we go. Uh, okay, let's complete the process there. So my Ubuntu installation is going to be lost here at the moment, I believe. And this is the thing I need to change which device is going to load the, the bootloader. Now, this option here needs to change to the SSD, the ATA Corsair Force LX. There we go. So if I leave it as it is, it's going to change how Windows boots. So if I remove the Ubuntu SSD or delete the operating system, uh, my computer is done, it's not going to boot up on Windows. I'm going to choose the Corsair Force SSD. And seems like everything is ready for the installation now. So let's begin the process of installation right now. Uh, I live in Mexico. Okay. Thank you. You are going to be that means development in English. Password uh, login automatically since I live alone, I don't really need this. And looks like it's actually popping files. Oh, okay. So um, I guess I need to give it some time. So in the meantime, we can actually talk about something else, I guess. <laughs> so why, if I already had my development tools on Windows, why I'm doing this? Well, uh, for starters, as I had mentioned on previous uh, streams, uh, the temptation for just uh, Stop working and begin playing video games on Windows is way too high for me. <laughs> I, I, I do lack of self-control in that aspect, so to avoid the distractions and the um, and my video games, uh, I just basically boot up Linux. Some people believe that Linux is actually a gaming platform. Everybody else knows that. Well, at least me. I'm just going to be talking from for myself, I guess else i do believe that linux is not a gaming platform at all so other people are trying to say otherwise the the fact for me is that uh linux linux uh, does gaming very badly and i don't know it's, it's not a gaming platform if you want a gaming computer just install windows on it uh, even installing the drivers is a chore 
And I do know that you can actually install video, AAA video games on that, even uh, Steam games. The support is limited, not all games run on Linux. And you may argue that you may use tools to actually make some games run on Linux. Uh, I just think that it's way too much of a hassle to just play your video games. So you have to work very, very, very hard on Linux just to get to the starting line on Windows, on the video games, that is. Uh, for programming, it's just fine. You don't really need a high-end computer for programming. Uh, it really helps to have a high-end computer for programming, but it's not required for you to enjoy it. So, And I cannot say the same thing for video games. Never mind, here we are. So, I wonder what animal is, is now, is there in the back? I think it's some kind of wolf, a dog, or a hot, or, or a... Maybe it's a fox, I don't know. It seems to have a, a pair of headphones there. It looks pretty good, actually. It's a very cool design. Nice. Well, it looks like it's about to finish. Uh, yet, we are far from over. We are going to be working on this installation for quite some time. Uh, even seems like uh, it actually seems like the video driver is now uh, getting a, a lot of of hearing here. Yeah. There is a lot of screen tear. I think that's just fine because uh, I don't have the video drivers, and this is just the installation taking quite some time. But never mind that. Huh, who knows? LibreOffice is pretty much uh, a substitute for Microsoft Office. Hmm. I think it's about to finish. Let's give it some time then. So, I'm going to be using Ubuntu. Uh, for programming on Java and developing databases on MariaDB. Okay, there, there it is. I'm going to reboot now. I'm going to keep pressing F12 on my computer so I can actually choose uh, the which partition I wish to use to boot up. I wonder where it is. Uh, Ubuntu SSD. I guess it's this one that says Ubuntu. There we go. I installed the system on an SSD, so it should boot quite fast. There we go. Actually, uh, it looks pretty nice. I wonder if I actually need to install my the drivers. Okay, let me make a little change. You can actually see what I'm seeing right now. There we go. Now you should be able to see what I'm seeing. There we go. It looks pretty nice actually. I don't see too much screen tearing at the moment. Okay, let's uh, omit that. Yeah, why not? Let's send a report. Okay, there is a list of software here. Uh, looks like they already know what I'm going to install. I'm going to install uh, Visual Studio Code, Spotify, uh, Idea Community Edition, uh, Discord, what else? Maybe game, Git Kraken, maybe. OBS, I don't think so. I, I, I'm using a dual PC setup, so I'm not going to be using OBS at the moment. Audacity, I, I may like to install Audacity. Uh, maybe Google Chrome. Let's begin. Um, 
there is already an, an update so let's let's just update from the graphic user uh, user interface actually doing a pretty good job without doing too much so i was uh, having a really hard time on the past on the previous version this seems to be a pretty more straightforward uh, thing to do let's try to install from here the uh, the official nvidia drivers let's see if it's there oh wow never mind so Wow, this version of Ubuntu actually detects correctly my. And I already using the the right GeForce RTX 2070 drivers, and it's it's been chosen by default. I I surprise I happily surprised that this happens actually. So I guess I'm not going to be dealing with uh, the problems that I've been dealing on the previous version. I already liking this very much. Thank you. Uh, I wonder if I need to do something else in the update arena. Let's see. Let's open the terminal window. Where is the terminal here? Maybe it's in utilities. There we go. So here is the terminal. Let's add it to my favorites. Okay, let's launch the terminal. Uh, I don't think you can actually read that, so okay, let's see. I guess this is the menu. References. I wonder where can I change the the size of the font? There we go. I wonder if there is consolata here. No. Uh I guess I should be changing only the Try 18. I guess that's just enough for the moment. Maybe a little smaller. Maybe 6 inch should be fine. There we go. Not too big, not too small. And here I'm going to be using the sudo command. And I'm going to be sudo update. Oh, wait, no. sudo apt update. So I'm going to be updating the software list here. There we go. And now sudo apt great. And it actually found a lot of software to be updated. So I'm going to say yes, update everything. And I just need to wait for this to finish the update process. Okay, it already did. There we go. I guess so far uh, we do have a basic installation here. Uh, there is a software shop on Ubuntu that I don't really use too much. Uh, but let's give it a shot right now. Maybe it has been upgraded. Uh, let me look for. Uh, let's try Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code. There we go. Let's install it from here. Uh, what else do I need? Uh, VLC to play back videos. Oh. Uh, okay. What else do I need? Uh, IntelliJ IDEA. There we go. There is the ultimate edition. I'm going to be installing the community edition. I hope that I can basically just install it from here and hope for the best. What happened? I already say. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I guess I, I am installing uh, all the other stuff. Maybe that's why. Okay. Okay, looks like it, it already finished. So let's try again. What? Not working anymore. 
There we go. Delia idea community edition. Wait, did I already install it? Oh, it looks like it already installed it. Okay. Yeah, so that's a test. That's why not? Uh, I do prefer the dark team because most of the time, uh, uh, as you can see here, I get tired of my eyes a lot. So a dark team helps me uh, to rest my, my, my eyes a little bit better. Okay, it looks like. Uh, I do remember that IntelliJ idea comes with, a, with its own virtual machine. So I don't really need to install uh, the Java virtual machine or the JDK, the Java development kit. I'm going to do so anyway, maybe. Okay, so where where is it? Oh, okay, it was behind all this. I'm going to create a hello world program just to try it out. And I can basically see that I don't have a JDK right now. There is a download link here. Uh, there is a... Uh, I don't know. The last time, last time I tried to install the official um, Oracle JDK, uh, it was a chore. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure. Um, let's try it out again. And this is the problem here. Uh, just a chore. I'm going to try to download it. I guess it's going to fail right now. There is a dev installator installation here. Okay, it looks like it's actually working as intended. This is the Java development kit. So it must contain the official Java development kit. Okay, let's try to install it now. It didn't ask me for a Oracle account. Um, I do have an account. I just don't like to use it too much because such a chore. But seems like I'm not being requested for one here. That's that's nice actually. So I am installing the official Oracle JDK. Okay, I guess that if I do this, Java. Uh, it's not installed. It's not considered installed. I guess I need to restart the computer, maybe. Okay, so, okay. Let's try again. Not detected. Yes, I want to close all. I want to reboot my computer and see if that does something. Let's start. Uh, I forgot my pressing F12, so I can choose what device to boot. There we go. Try Ubuntu again. And seems like Ubuntu is booting again. Okay, so let's try out the, let's check for the Java version again. Let's try the Java C. Looks like it's not doing anything. I wonder what it installed. The download folder. I'm going to try out to install it again. Uh, I wonder if I need to do something else. Not the store because it's actually showing me it's to install again. 
So I guess it didn't install anything. Okay, now it, the uninstall button is okay now. Wonder if I can check for the Java version again. It didn't doing anything. So I'm going to go for the Open JDK. Oh wait, let me try something before that. Let's try IntelliJ IDEA again. I really like this wallpaper. Okay, IntelliJ IDEA. I'm going to add this to my favorites too. Let's create a new project. Well, I have to say that, okay, there is a virtual machine installed here. The JDK 12 is already installed, I guess. I don't, I wonder why I cannot. I don't have uh, access to the Java compiler, I guess. No. Uh, it's already installed and it's installed inside the user lit JBN JDK. Okay. Let's, let's try to create a project here. A Java Hello World program. You're going to be a Hello World. And let's try it out. Okay, let's just run the program and see we get something yes okay the program was executed successfully now my question is why i cannot access the java compiler or the java virtual machine from the command line hmm, i guess i'm going to be googling that Okay, compile a Java file on Ubuntu. Uh, if I try to do to do this, it's not going to work. So. Uh, here's a recommendation. I already I already did install the Java virtual machine. Maybe I need to do something else. Uh, but never mind that. Maybe I should just ins uh, install this one here. This is the last version of the JDK. Uh, this is an, a different JDK, may I say. This is uh, Open JDK. This is the open source version of the Oracle um, JDK, I guess. There we go. So it's about to install a lot of things. Yeah, let's say yes. So technically speaking, there is no technical difference between the Oracle version of the JDK and the open source version of the JDK. Technically speaking, they work pretty much the same. The difference comes on the license agreement, where the Oracle version is going to require me to pay a fee if I want to use um, the official JDK and the Java runtime environment. For learning purposes, uh, both JDKs are pretty much the same to me, so I don't really care. Okay. Let's try out. There we go. And the Java compiler is already installed. And you can see here that I'm using the Open JDK version. I'm going to leave it as it is. Um, I'm glad to know that I can basically use both here. Let's close this one, for example. Now oh, let's use the settings. And let's change the JDK version. Uh, no, I'm wrong here. Maybe some project structure, maybe? There we go. Yes. I'm going to close all of this. Let's open again. It's loading the same project, actually. Let's close the project then. There we go. Let's create a new one. And here, I wonder why it's not showing me 
the same thing that it showed with me before. There we go. Right now, I'm using the Open JDK. Yet, I guess I could use the official one. I guess it's this one down here. Say okay to that. There we go. Uh, maybe it's the same thing. I don't. I don't remember. Never mind. Oh my god. I'm using the same version, I guess. So I'm not changing anything. Let's use the open version anyway. Okay. I'm going to be using the open source version because technically speaking, it's the same thing. So, and it's basically open source and free. That's free in free beer, I guess. Uh, so let's go use that. I'm going to cancel this one. Let's reopen this. Uh, this is a hello world program. There we go. So just in case, uh, I guess I am able to compile um, using the terminal and some text editor. So let's, before trying that, I may like to install Visual Studio Code. I did already do it. Uh, Visual, uh, there it is. I already have it. Let's open Visual Studio Code. I'm going to download a Hello World program first. Let's copy paste this Hello World example. Uh, a welcome screen. I'm going to create a new file. Just paste the code here. And what's this? file system now let's go to documents and here i'm going to create new file called hello world.java i believe there we go but this is the hello world.java let's save it and let's minimize it for the time being let's go to the to the documents and here is my file i'm going to open a terminal on this folder and here we're going to play a little bit if i list the contents of the folder there is only one file here um, i'm going to compile this uh, this java file using the next the java c command and the name of the of the file that should be enough Okay, no output, that means uh, it completed successfully. If I list the contents of the folder again, and get in my source code file along with my, uh, my compiled class here. So, I can actually see it here. Here is my new file, my compiled class file. Um, let's clear the screen. And to execute the program, separate a little bit here. If I want to execute this program um, on my command line, I only say Java paste and the name of the class. I, I wonder if it's called the name of the class is hello world. So uh, if I do this, I execute the program and I do get the hello world uh, message out to the console. So basically, I just finished this. I already had my tools. I'm very glad that uh, I don't have to deal with the problem of installing the, the video driver. It's already uh, it's wonderful. I think it's the right decision to make it the, the default driver uh, for my video card at least. So I don't have to deal with the problem of installing the driver myself driving me insane doing that okay so um, i don't think i'm going to be using that maybe i'm going to keep this around the icons look very neat by the way i really like them um i'm going to download a font that i really like to use it's called in console at a g let's download the open type one here Download. 
There we go. And here it is. I'm going to install the font. And okay, it's already installed. So if I go here, maybe I can make this a little bigger. Uh, the Java extension pad is recommended. Let's install it then. Okay, it's installing something. Showing some problems that I'm not going to be addressing right now. Uh, okay. So here is my uh, Hello World program. Try to a little there we go. A little bigger maybe for you to read. A little less, then there we go. Okay. So this is the program. Uh I'm going to change the font used here to preferences maybe settings. Okay, 14 is fine. The font family that I'm going to be using is going to be called Consolata G. And there we go. I, I think that it already changed. I'm not so sure. So I really like this font because um, I can differentiate between uh, uh, the zeros, for example, between the zeros and the uppercase O way easier and the L and the number one way easier and even the 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 Y so I can differentiate between these characters way easier than before there we go so I don't get confused especially when using numbers and the and the lower case at L so um, I'm not getting problem with that and with these symbols here with the semicolon and with the apostrophe and the and this other symbol here so I'm getting a way easier time doing this I don't remember like this for me to be able to Oh, maybe it's the other way around. There we go. So I guess if I save this, if I compile it, and if I run it, there we go. So I'm showing the new message. This is the first one is a zero, uppercase O, lowercase O, lowercase L. This is the number one, and the Y, the, the uppercase Y, I guess. So I really like that font. I going to use it here too. I just change it right now. Uh, there we go. In Consolata G. I'm going to keep the same size. And there we go. You can actually see it here clearly. There we go. So I'm getting the same font on my terminal on Ah, the last place is going to be my IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. Where is it? Here. Let's change it here. Change the font here. There we go. Font. In Consolata G. 16, maybe. It's going to be Pro P8. Uh, the key map, I'm going to do this mouse, control down, lower the font size, uh, control up to uh, for, for this one. There we go. So now I can change the size of the font easily. There we go. And reset the, time, the size whenever I want. Wait, it's not doing it. Let's see what went wrong. Emap. 
There we go. Perfect font size. Yes. Okay, it's already there. There we go. It's working now. There we go. So, seems pretty interesting. Uh, the last software I'm going to be installing is going to be. Let's close this. Let's close everything actually. I wonder if I can find that on the software uh, installer too here. Software Ubuntu. Let's look for data grip. There we go. We do have data grip here. This is a database management system that I use for a lot of databases. I can use it with MariaDB, MySQL, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle 11G. I really like it. Uh, it's very straightforward. It does have some bugs. Uh, not a deal breaker for me. Uh, I do appreciate the ability to be able to manage a lot of databases on the same tool. Obviously, if you need a specific uh, feature that is only available on the official database management tool that you are using for your database, uh, you may like to download the official tool for that database. Um, since I, uh, I like to, to use several databases, um, that's why I'm using Datagraph. Uh, ah, yes, I do have an account here. Yeah. This is paid software, by the way. That's what is asking me for an account. Um, I already paid for a year. Uh, I'm going to be using MariaDB. Where is it? As you can see here, there's a lot of databases. Uh, I don't know uh, some of them. Like, for example, Snowflake. I, I don't know Verticas. Base A A S E, Greenplum, Apache Spore, Apache Cassandra, Amazon Redshift, Apache Hive, Exasol, Lit House, and Apache Derby. Those are those are the ones that I don't really know because I don't I didn't even know they existed. Uh, everyone else, uh, since they are basically uh, industry standard, uh, I do know them. I'm going to be using MariaDB. There we go. And the directory, I guess that inside documents here, I guess I can do a new folder called SQL. And there we go. Start using data grip. There we go. I do have my own server here. It's, let me, there we go. Oh, wait. Okay, it looks like the, the server is on. I do have my own Ubuntu server, 18.04. Um, so I just switch it on because if I'm not going to use it, why should I put it on anyway? Um, I already have, uh, let's see, SSH, uh, I think is this one here. Oh, again, yes. There we go. So right now, I just log into my Ubuntu server. It's already on, it's a separate computer. Um, you can see here, let me actually try to update software here because 
it's been a while since I've been using it. Okay, I'm going to okay. There we go. I am already updating the packages. Now let's upgrade. There, is, there are some GCC compilers, I guess, some libraries. Uh, okay, let's update all that. Pretty straightforward. Okay, the software is updated. Voila. Ah, I forgot. I wonder if I do have Git here. Oh, wait. I do have Git on my server. I wonder if I have Git on. I don't think so. Open a new window. I don't have Git. So let's install it. Install Git here. What? Oh, never mind. Okay, uh, again. This is the command to install Git. It's a source control system. I use it a lot, by the way. So let's install Git. Wow, that's a lot of packages. Did I say yes? I don't remember. I, I didn't type S. So I guess, since I just uh, push enter, Okay, those are not necessary anymore. Let's remove them with this command here. Paste it. Yes. There we go. So it's cleaning out uh, unused packages. And there we go. So I guess that now I do have Git version. There we go. Uh, I'm going to be using Git later, right now. Uh, I'm going to switch back to my server. So this server is on. Uh, why did I turn it on? Uh, let's check it out here on data grab. I do have a database here, I believe, a test database. So let's try to connect to the server database here. So I'm going to add a new data source. It's a MariaDB server. Uh, I need to download the, I do have missing drivers, so I'm going to be downloading that. There we go. And now I need to add the information to connect. Uh, like this maybe. Don't remember the database. Uh, there we go. We do have a connection now. And let's go to the schemas. Wait, what? Yeah. Okay. So I guess Ubuntu is storing the password uh, itself. So right now I do have a test database. And that's pretty much it. There we go. I'm going to be listing the test database right now. There is one schema, here is the test database, and I already have a, a table here, it's called person, and there we go. So if I recall correctly, uh, this is a test table on a test database, and I just basically was, uh, I was actually uh, configuring the, the clock, the internal clock for the server. If I add a new row here, it doesn't matter if I don't add anything. Um, I can uh, try some data here. Uh, what I actually testing here is that the the last field is a timestamp. That that's a value that is going to represent the date and time of the insertion of the data. If I say the data right here, it's going to give me the current date and the current time if that's actually correct yes there we go so i guess uh there we go 
I can actually see the insert statement here. And here I'm using the default uh, for calling for MariaDB default value. We inserted that. So that's it. Uh, I already have a database on the network. It's not, it's not a local database on this computer. It's a database on an actual Ubuntu server. Um, so I can basically test a lot of things here. I wonder if I do have a Samba share that there on that server. Let me try it out. Uh, it's not detecting it. Okay, I guess I need to do something else uh, in order for me to be able to connect to the Samba share on the server. I wonder if I can connect here some way. There is a connect to a server option. Okay, let's try it out, I guess. Wonder if I can do this? Maybe I need to add the SMB dash this maybe. There we go. So now I am able to connect to my server. So this is a Samba share. It's going to ask me for my username, obviously. Wonder, I think it's. Uh, yes, let's just record it forever. There we go. So right now I am connected to my server uh, using Samba, and here I do have a uh, lot of courses. These are videos uh, from the courses I used to watch. I do have a lot of them. Um, I'm working my way up on the Java arena here. See if I can actually watch some of these courses right now. Oh, okay. So it's actually playing back. <laughs> you open it several times. Close them. So it's actually working. I play in this video directly from my server. So I guess that's, uh, I just ready. Wow, everything was pretty smooth. Uh, compared to the last version, 1804 was not that good. I guess this is going to be my new distribution. I'm going to be enjoying this one here. Maybe I should, uh, uh, let me see from the top of my head. I'm going to be installing Discord. Let's install this. Uh, Spotify. Because I do like to stay in the zone. And I do have a, a programming playlist. Uh, what other software may I need? I don't remember really. Oh, wait. I may like uh, for documentation purposes, uh, LibreOffice. Office. I don't see LibreOffice. That's weird. Okay, let's look it for it here. Maybe productivity. I'm going to need Calibre for my ebooks. Uh. There we go, LibreOffice. Do I have to, I don't think I need to install them one by one, do I? Maybe I got a typo. There we go, now it's showing. Okay, that was weird. I guess I need to install this one. So all the other programs are going to be installed too. Okay. 
So it's going to be downloading and then installing, I guess. Uh, what else do I need? Don't remember. Ah, okay, for selecting. Fine. Uh, what else do I need? I think I just okay for the for the time being. I don't remember if I need or something else. Hmm. Something to play music. I I do use Spotify and BRC. But there is a music player still with the. Uh, the fact that I'm using a Spotify pretty much nulli uh, defeats the purpose of having this on my computer. Uh, graphics, I am pretty bad doing graphics, by the way. I know the, a graphical person, I guess. Scribbles, I used Scribbles way back in the day. I do remember it being really good. Oh, nice let's look uh let's see what has changed because i the last time i used this program was like around 10 years ago oh somebody died at okay some things that are made with previous Magazine production. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Pretty nice. Manuals. Box design. Pretty impressive. Maybe I should just install it and keep it in the in the background, just in case I need to uh, to make some good looking PDFs in the future. I don't see I use image ma image magic uh command line tools for for mass edition of some pictures in my job I don't uh, I'm not going to be using that at the moment so I guess that's all I guess what is this one? Uh, full feature digital art studio I may need uh, some basic uh, tool for modifying pictures for editing pictures, so I guess I'm going to install this and give it a shot. Again, I know the created <laughs> visual design person, so yet I may like to have um, uh, some software to be able to create banners, uh, little things, you know. Okay, so I guess that's all for today. I, I hope you have enjoyed for uh, watching me. Uh, installing the last version of Ubuntu and some tools. I'm going to get something to eat and I'm coming back later and we are going to be working on Java and databases. It's going to be really fun and very productive, I guess. Thank you for coming and when I come back today, I'm going to be working on um, a, on how do you call it in English? Invoice. I'm going to be creating a, a digital invoice software. Uh, nothing too fancy. I'm not going to be creating a desktop application. Uh, I'm going to be generating XML files that represent the invoices. And XML files are basically text. Uh, I do know that Java can create XML files uh, by itself using some libraries. So I'm going to be using that. I have no experience doing what I say I'm going to do. That doesn't matter. So I'm going to be learning and you're going to be uh, following me on this quest. So thank you very much for coming today. See you next time.